Now, before moving on to the actual implementation of things like anomaly detection, I'm just going to acquaint you with some terms. So what is an anomaly? Now, anomaly detection is, now, in order to understand what anomaly detection is about, let's just focus on anomaly. Now, anomaly, as the name suggests, is something that doesn't usually happen. So for instance, something like the COVID crisis. That is an anomaly because something like this hasn't happened in practically a century. Last time it was the big flu after the First World War when my great-grandmother was a baby. And now we have the COVID. So something like the COVID crisis, now that is an anomaly. Having a massive spike, say in your pulse rate, Okay, if my pulse rate is mostly from 60 to 120, and if I do something very strenuous and it goes up to 170, then that is an anomaly. So, and I'm showing you this picture. It's a depiction of an anomaly. So, oh, you have all of these blue dots within this red circle. Now, these are values which are the normal, usual, run-of-the-mill values. And the values that you have over here, the orange dots, these are the outliers or the anomalies. So if I was to take my fitness data for today and look at my pulse rate throughout the day or throughout the morning when I had my Fitbit tracker on, the pulse rate of 170 that I recorded and that was slightly higher than it should have been. So I overstrained myself. So that kind of a pulse rate was an anomaly and the other values are going to be pretty much normal. So a high fever, having a fe fever of say 104 degrees, now that is an anomaly because that's a huge spike. So if your fever is over here, 97 Fahrenheit to 99, which is for most people, and then it suddenly goes up to 104, then that value is going to land up somewhere within these orange dots and will be an anomaly. And auto, something known as autoencoders are a very powerful way of detecting anomalies and even identifying the variables that contribute to something being an anomaly. So I'm, I'm just going to briefly introduce you to autoencoders. Now this is the autoencoder architecture for something, now this is an example which uses something known as convolutional neural networks. And this is something we use for imagery data. You don't have to worry about CNN because the theory of anomaly detection is pretty much the same. We put in an input sample. In this case, we are going to work with a flat format file, but yes, you could have imagery data. And then with autoencoders, we have something known as an encoder and what it does within this latent space representation, what we are going to have is a computation of reconstruction loss. So essentially your input sample is going to be taken apart and the reconstruction loss is going to be computed. And it is when you compute the reconstruction loss, so if you just look at this graph, like you see these greenish dots. So these are the anomalies. So it is by computing the reconstruction loss from or from this latent space representation, you identify the anomaly. So if this is my heart rate normally during the course of the day, say the blue lines or the red line, then the sudden spike that I had today morning of 170 beats per minute, that would be an anomaly. And it is going to be detected by constructing the reconstruction loss and then we get the reconstructed sample out. But essentially it is here where the anomalies are detected using something known as an autoencoder. And yes, when we carry out anomaly detection, we just provide our auto. So the input sample is going to exclusively comprise of the predictor. So unlike supervised classification, we are not going to provide the labels, we are just going to provide the predictors and that is going to be used to 
identify the anomaly. So autoencoders are a kind of unsupervised learning.